A helix is a three-dimensional twisted shape. Uh, you'll see examples like this in nature of a helix, uh, but common objects formed like a helix are a spring, a screw, a spiral staircase, and of course um, a DNA molecule. Um, and what I thought we could do is take a look at the helix tool in LightWave. Now, uh, you wouldn't use the helix tool. The helix tool is not going to rail extrude, but it clones objects along a rail, uh, but it creates the rail for you. So I thought we could take a look. So let's go ahead and uh, hop over to um, creating a box. So I'm just going to create a little box shape here. Okay, we'll go full screen. And there's our origin, and there's our box. I'm going to move it out of the way so that we can uh, work with it uh, with the uh, with the panel open. So I'm going to come over to multiply and duplicate more helix. Okay, and I'm going to bring the number of rotations. I'm going to bring the height down actually, uh, and lower the rotations. Okay, so instead of supplying a rail for helix. The, the rail will be created with Helix. So the, you won't see your geometry because right now we're just focusing on, on the rail that it's going to clone on, uh, that it's going to make uh, duplicate copies of. So you can decide the number of rotations, like how many times do you want it to, to rotate around in the given height that you set up. Okay, so we'll just say, let's say um, eight. Okay. You can decide how many copies, how many clones per rotation. Okay, and so from here, how many copies do you want by the time it gets to here? Okay, so I'm instead of uniform, I'm going to say user defined, and I want uh, 12 copies. Okay, so from here, it's going to make 12 copies to here. Okay, and then the the radius, you can decide how large of a loop it's going to create. Okay. You can decide for the helix height how tall. That's what I adjusted when we first came into the tool. Uh, you can decide how tall you want this. The shift. How, how much offset from the start to the end do you want. And then taper allows you to scale the loop. So if you want it to taper in or taper out. Okay. So I'll have it taper in a little bit. You can make a double helix. Uh, that would come in handy for, say, a DNA strand. Uh, you can have the object orient to the path. It's another option. But let's go ahead and use these options and click OK. okay. So we have our, let's go just to here. So we have our object, and it started here, and it loops all the way around, and it works its way up. Now, the interesting thing, uh, what I think is interesting, is that it leaves the curve it leaves the rail okay now I usually find myself using the helix tool to create this uh, and not so much for cloning my objects I can always just create a, a curve and and use um, come over to duplicate more and use rail clone here to clone objects on the curve and I could create this without the helix but it's kinda nice if I want to um, let's go and I'm going to make a new object and let's just draw out a box again and uh, note that it is offset from the origin um, uh, just in case if you were wondering in the last example so I'm going to go over to multiply helix and say we wanted to make a lot of rotations zero taper um, and we'll increase the height and uh, shrink this down some hit OK okay so I got my my clones but really what I was after was look at that look at this curve it was an easy way to make this curve so although the helix tool is a cloning tool I find that it can be useful for creating curves uh, because if I wanted to make a, a quick spring like this, um, I could just rail extrude on, on this. I could uh, use this, save this out as a motion path uh, and 
uh, bring this into layout and have an animation that follows that. And of course, um, you know, using the taper setting, you can change um, change up this uh, this spiral motion, this helix. So, don't just think of the helix tool as a cloning tool. Um, remember that it will save in another layer. You'll have access to this curve, and you can use it as a way to make a coiled curve. So, this is just a real quick look at the helix tool. Uh, it is a cloning tool, but don't forget about this. This is this is one of the handy little things that, uh, at least that I find useful, uh, and uh, we can use it for for cloning as well if you're wanting to clone on a helix. So again, just a quick look at the helix tool, and there you go.